we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father, we believe we will receive help this dawn. We believe our descendants will do well. The evil man's wealth has been prepared for the righteous. We believe that we will receive incredible blessings. You've said as much as we love you, we will receive. We believe that the word will be fulfilled. May our descendants receive prosperity. May we live a life where we give benefit to others. And for our country and our people, may we become someone who is a patriot. And may we be instruments of righteousness who convey your will to mankind. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let's find that. God helps at this dawn. He will surely help, but it's because of my sin, my ancestors' sins that we cannot receive. How confident is God? He says, your lives, your lives doing well, you have to show to others, not to have disease and suffer and to become a beggar and then to say, oh, you know, to go to heaven. That's not why he said to become a witness. If God is almighty and all he can do is send you to heaven and can't give you material blessings, then he wouldn't say, if you love me, then receive wealth to fill up your treasuries. So how wrongly have we lived? Someone said, well, I believed well by myself. That's, that's of no use. You have to show others. You have to become a witness. Oh, I believe well by myself. That's a lie. Even though you don't say a word, already you can show others. Your, li your life shows to others so that people are like, oh, what is, why, you know, what has that person done that they live like that? So let's surely do well. Let's read together. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. So, what chapter of Matthew is this? Chapter 5, verse what? 16. Isn't this funny? If it's Matthew chapter 5, this is where God has spoken of the eight blessings. It's a precious chapter. So from the beginning, he talks about blessings. So firstly, my heart, my spirit has to be poor to, to thirst after God. Amos chapter 8 verse 11. So there seems to be so much of God's word, but without Christ, that is the false sermon. This precious uh, food that we seek when we mourn that's when we're comforted so he's talking about each problem in our heart and at the end it says when we are cursed that's when we that's when we we receive blessings so 1 peter chapter 4 verse 14 it says when you are cursed for the name of christ that's when you're a blessed man and then that's when he gives us the holy spirit galatians chapter 4 verse 6 so the holy spirit when we receive the Holy Spirit, we're worthy to call him Father. And it's only someone who receives the Holy Spirit that receives blessings. Why do you receive blessings? Because the Holy Trinity is inside of me. From that moment, you become a son of God. That is a living faith. Your three consciences have been revived, so you've become a man. That's when the Father gives you blessings. Before that, so that you'll revive your consciences, your three consciences, he will make you suffer, so you'll realize and become a man. But if your body is sick, how much have I tormented God? You should be repenting and asking for forgiveness for your wrongs, but you don't do that. And all you think about is how you're sick. So that's being centered on yourself, your greed, and that's why God doesn't heal you. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 1. The moment I sin, I've tormented God. And I've brought about hurts in my heart. So the hurts in my heart, I did it. So of course, you know, I've made the hurts. But to to shred God's heart, to to give heartache to my parents, you know, that's 
to not know that, that's being a disobedient child. So let's say you're ruined. You know, you were acting arrogantly. You had a car accident. You know, you were proud, so your business was ruined. Because of my sin, that's why I suffered. But my parents, they have heartache. Their, their hearts are broken. So if you don't know your, understand your parents' heart, how can that be a man? Isaiah chapter 43, verse 24. Every time you sin, you have tormented God. Even though it's recorded, if you're truly a man, you, you're asking for forgiveness for giving your parents heartache. That's an obedient child. Oh, what have I done? You know, why is it that you have heartache? You know, that's not a man. That's, that, you know, that's, how can that be any different to a beast? So if you can't even realize that, you're a beast that is perishing. Psalms chapter 49, verse 20. So here, God, here he, he proclaims these blessings. He's talking about cleansing our heart. And he says, if you do false debt repentance, you will surely be cursed. It's when we're cursed for false debt repentance, that's when we become a blessed man. But that's when we don't want to do it. And that's when we compromise and we fall and, and, and we just put it aside. And we don't go the way of blessings. So we start the way of blessings. We have to continue, but then we go the way of ruin. And so God can't give us blessings. There's no one here who will be joyful if someone they know is ruined. But if you don't know, you end up pushing them to ruin. If someone comes for counseling, if you don't know, everything that you do, you, you tell them things of ruin. You tell them things that, uh, that you do. So I say to our young people, if you want to do whatever you want to do, if you want to succeed as the very best, you follow after the person who is the best. So that's not about going to heaven. It's the things you learn in this world, you have to learn the best way. You look at people who can't succeed. They always follow after someone themselves, like themselves, someone who's beggarly and, and weak and struggling. You can't do well. These young people, they say, oh, I want to sell fruit. Okay, well, in the city of Busan, you need to find out where they have the best fruit. Go to that market, and the person who has earned the mo most money from selling fruit, you find that person, and whatever time they come out in the early morning, you just follow after that person, and you just buy what that person buys. If you learn like that, in that short time, you'll learn rightly in the best way. But you look at people who don't do well. They always follow after some beggar and do beggarly things. Even 10, 20 years, you still don't learn because all you learn is someone who's being ruined. And so I give this testimony. In Korea, the place, the restaurant that has the best food, that person came from the countryside and, and ended up uh, begging for food at the best restaurant in, in Seoul, a Japanese restaurant. You know, if you get hosted for a meal in a place like that, one meal can be a thousand, two thousand dollars. And sometimes people don't even touch that food and it gets thrown out. So then even if you're begging for food, you end up getting food that hasn't even been touched. So I'm talking about that wealthy man. He he ended up sleeping at Seoul Station. But those who went to beggarly places to beg, they're still beggars now. But he went to the best restaurant. He only went there. And after receiving these scraps, he he still he didn't receive it for free. He found out how he could help that restaurant back then. Water was precious. So even though no one told him to, as much as he received food, he went and he brought water. And so the owner saw this beggar and thought he, he called him in and made him an employee. And then, and then later he became someone who, who was in charge of getting the ingredients. And later he became the best um, 
running all the best restaurants in Korea. So what's it saying? Who do you have to meet? You have to meet the best. Who is the best? Other than God, there is no best. And the only way to meet God is by the mystery of Christ. So it's not that Pastor Park is better that I'm saying you and your children will do well. It's because God's word is the best. So if you do according to the word, you will do well. So according to whom you meet, your life changes. If you meet a thief, you'll get robbed. If you meet a good person, then you'll receive help. So what kind of person am I and who am I meeting? Am I following the demons in my heart? Satan that's stuck to my filthy sins? Today, let's change. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, let your light shine. So where does this light come from? It's when you're cursed. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 13, as much as you are rebuked, you shine. So the 66 books, correction, rebuke, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, this word was inspired by God and it's all rebuke. Why is it rebuke? It's so that you will shine. So hearing rebuke, how sweet is this rebuke? Psalms chapter 119, verse 103, that it's sweet as honey. But you don't want to go to a church where you hear rebuke. So those places that only say words that are pleasing to hear, that is heresy. Luke chapter 6, verse 26. The pleasing words, that is the false prophet. What does a po- false prophet do? 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. They are heretics. Why? Because they make you go to hell. They stop you from shining. What is faith? It's to become salt and light. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. But they stop you from shining. So those people who hate to hear rebuke, that's not a man. Already they hate the Bible. If you hate the Bible, you're not a man. If you can't give this Bible as rebuke, that is the false sermon. That is heresy. But we cannot condemn those people as heretics. Only God can do that. Because if that person repents, they can be forgiven. So there's no one who is an eternally a heretic. If you confess your sins, then you're, you're, you become a child of God. So it's not falling that's the problem. It's not getting up. It's not sinning that's the problem. It's not repenting. So even if you're a blessed man, if you don't repent, you become evil. And an evil person, if they repent, they can become a blessed man. So no matter how dirty, if you wash, it will shine. But no, how, no matter how much, so that's what it's saying. In all of Ezekiel, you can't just believe once. So it says, let your light shine before men. So listening to rebuke, how good is this? But someone says, because they keep hearing rebuke, they're going to get a nervous breakdown. You're a demon. How, how much haven't you repented that you're going to get a nervous breakdown? If you repent, you become light. You have thanksgiving. So I think, look at those idiots. Oh, because I keep hearing rebuke rebuke from you, Pastor, I'm getting a nervous breakdown. How can you say such things? It's so pathetic when I hear that. Look at that idiot. If you hear rebuke and you do forced out repentance, you will shine. That nervous, that neurosis will disappear. Your stress will disappear. But how is it that you hear rebuke and you just let that, you just sit there and then you just end up saying demon talk? So I was like, Lord, this is so sad. It's for me to shine. Why would you get sick because of that? In the world, if you keep hearing rebuke, you end up suiciding. You do all sorts of strange things. You see these middle school students suiciding. You know they're suiciding because they came first in class. Why? Because the friends all all bullied him. Oh, because, you know, you must have cheated. So they, you know, they won't have anything to do with him. Oh, what a blessing. If the demons won't have anything to do with you, that's, what well, what a good blessing. You can just shine by yourself. But it's because you don't have faith that you do that. So th- those parents, they don't have faith. They may be trampling the courts of church, but that's not faith. So here it says, Let your light shine before men in such a way. So we all want to shine, but we don't know what it what it is to shine. What to to come first in your studies? Is that shining? No. Just because your eyes are sparkly and you look at something, is that shining? No matter how much you look, those eyes they can't hear. You need you you need something else to hear. So each part has to do their own. So you know what's wrong with Korea? They think that just doing well in studies, that means you're, you're top. 
you know, that's a disabled society. These days, you know, they're waking up and they're saying it's useless now. You've got to, in your, in your resume, you can't talk about which school you graduated from. You know, what's the point of writing which school when you got in with connections in a corrupt way anyway? So that's all useless. So in your resume now, you've got to write down your credentials. You know, I can fix this or, you know, I can do the, some skill. I can, I can wash dishes. So writing that, that's these days, that's what a resume is. So now these days people are waking up. It's so sad. So if you shine, it's to do all good things. And this happens when you receive rebuke. Yet let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works. Please listen carefully. So it's not the pure conscience or the good conscience. It's the kind conscience. It's the last conscience that you revive. So if you cannot revive that last conscience to have good works, then all your faith collapses. So 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 19, someone who has revived their, their kind conscience and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So what does this mean? So glory where you overflow with joy. So if you don't have joy, then you're evil. You are planting disasters and curses. If you pla because you're planting disasters and curses, how can you have joy in your face? Oh, today I'm planting disasters and tomorrow I'll plant disasters. In a few days, you know, there's going to be an explosion. And that's why you die because of unfortunate things. You know, you end up tied up in someone else's accident and die. Even when the Samping building collapsed, you know, there was, they couldn't even find corpses. So they couldn't get compensation. So that person had died. But because there was no proof, you know, this person ended up having a breakdown and, you know, they went to America to get to try and get some healing. Just because you go to America, are you going to get healing? You know, they ended up becoming insane. So how is it they die without a trace? It's because you're so unfortunate. That's what happens when you plant disasters. God does this all. So Proverbs chapter 19, verse 23, it's God who gives disasters and God who blocks them. So your good works, these works, it means all your consciences have been revived. It means you become a blessed man. All your actions have changed. Your good works. So where does this kindness come from? You have to revive your kind conscience. So when this, so after repenting where you revive your three consciences, you become a blessed man who shines light to others to the point where you can say, look, you can be confident and say, and, sh and, 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 and say, look, because all your actions have changed. But is it something that I can do? Well, you have to have the eight blessings in Matthew chapter 5 in order to shine. And then your actions have to change in order to give glory to God. If you don't give glory, you'll go to hell. So giving glory is to go to heaven. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 to 33. Going to heaven is, is to give glory. So it's not just to go to heaven. You have to have miracles now to give glory. So water changing to wine, that is giving glory. John chapter 2, verse 11. So this glory is where I have joy, I do more well, I go to heaven. And to make others have joy and do more well and go to heaven, that is giving glory. So where does this start with? The smallest action, which is to say amen. So if you can't say amen, you are the worst of evil. You're saying, I'm a filthy person. You, you're not saying amen. You're doing that yourself. So because your actions aren't changing, the easiest thing, which is to say amen. So giving glory. There's a lot of tapes out that talk about giving glory. You have to give glory to go to heaven and to make others to go to heaven. So if you can't even do this smallest action, afterwards, what else can you do? Nothing. 
So if you know this properly, at the beginning, my wife said to me, what, are you going to go to hell if you don't say amen? I said, I don't know. This is what the Bible has said. This is what God has appointed. It's not something I've done. So if I repent and my conscience has become, my kind conscience is refined, I can say amen. But otherwise, I can't say amen. You know, I, I know this because I've, I've tried it myself. Let's find 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. Why is it that my disease isn't being healed? I'm not receiving answers. I'm not receiving blessings. I can't shine light to others. You know, I can't show my actions. I'm still lacking. You know, if you can't even say amen, what other action will you be able to do when you can't do the easiest thing? So in other words, none of your actions have changed. If you can't even do the easiest action, how can you do anything harder? How can you build the second story if you haven't built the first? It's so sad. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, it says your kind conscience, yeah, your good works. Sorry, your good works. Why is it the, the good works, not the pure or the good, good work? Because if you don't revive your kind conscience, then your faith collapses. So here your actions change. But giving glory, the first thing is to say amen. So... You know, do you have to be a certain age or do you have to graduate from school to be able to say amen? No, anyone here can say amen. So if you can't even do this, what else do you think you've done? You haven't done anything. You look at those people who don't receive blessings, they never say amen. They can't, it won't come out. That smallest action, they can't change. So God says, that is giving me glory. Let's read together. For as many as are the promises of God, in him they are yes. Therefore also through him is our Amen, to the glory of God through us. Amen. Let's read it again. For as many as are the promises of God, in him they are yes. Therefore also through him is our Amen, to the glory of God through us. Amen. So if you don't go inside of Christ, you'll go to hell. You have to go inside of Christ to meet God. You have to go inside of Christ to become righteous. You have to go inside of Christ to receive the gift of faith. You have to go inside of Christ to have a relationship with God. So here, the 66 books, the promises, they're all yes, but where? In Christ. So in Him, everything is yes. So in Christ. So because you don't know the mystery of Christ, all these fakes who can't say Amen. If you go to a fake denomination, they sit there not saying Amen. But the fake pastor, they don't know. So whether they say Amen or not, they just they leave them alone. So if you don't say Amen to God's Word, you'll go to hell. If you can't say Amen, you're not in Christ. Because you're not in Christ, you're not a new man. That means you have demons inside of you. Only the blood of Christ watches away my sin to get rid of the demons. So that's how your disease is healed. You receive blessings, your actions change. So here it says, in Christ, you say yes. So according to the Bible, that yes is our men. So therefore also through him is our men to the glory of God. What's this glory? To overflow with joy. So your diseases and financial problems are all solved. And it's not, amen is not just joy. You do more well and you go to heaven. And then you become someone who shares this with others. So if I say amen and I receive blessings, then you can evangelize to others for them to do well. But if you don't do well, you always evangelize so that others don't do well. So you, you ruin. So you look, you always evangelize like with like. You always bring someone that's the same with you. If, you're, if you have a heart of a thief, then you bring someone with a heart of a thief and you see them departing. And so you can realize, oh, that's my state. Let's realize properly. So what is this saying? If your actions change so that you can say amen, then already you're a blessed man. When you say yes to your parents, so if your parents are saying, oh, I'm going to give you $1,000 and you say yes, then you'll receive it. But if you just stare at them, not replying, then you're not going to receive. So why live like that? So we have to change our actions and receive blessings. So if I live like, if, so if I live like this, then you end up killing all your children. But you say, oh, but I, I made food, you know, from dawn and I'm, 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 and they're getting tutoring, you know. 
when, when, you know, you're going to make them suicide and break up your family. And then, but you say, oh, but I'm living for my children. How can the worst of evil be living for their children? Let's wake up. My actions, when even the smallest action can't change, then I'm not in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, let's read it again together. For as many as are the promises of God, in Him they are yes. Therefore also through Him is our Amen, to the glory of God through us. Amen. So some people with demons who aren't, in, who aren't even in Christ, you know, they're trained to say Amen. Even that's, that's crazy. Even a, a, a voice recorder could say Amen. You know, that means next to that voice recorder is going to be all this gold because they keep saying Amen, Amen. You know, that means diamonds must fall on top of that voice recorder. No, we have to change in Christ. It's when Christ comes to us and we can say Amen. That's someone who's going to heaven, who's giving glory, who receives all blessings on this earth. So your actions have to change. But when you try this, you can't say Amen. So that's, you realize, oh, I'm being dragged around by demons. Instead of planting blessings, I'm planting disasters for me and my children to be ruined. So let's realize properly and be fixed. Let's all pray. Still, we can do well. Still, if we wash with the blood of Christ, we can do well. Let's surely wash and do well. So when we compare to the word, how wrong am I? This is why I haven't been receiving answers. This is why I still don't do well. I only say amen according to my mood. So how can I do well? If you're not even replying to your parents, even all of the neighborhood will call you a disobedient child. So how can I receive blessings in front of God when I do this? Why is it that this dawn's help doesn't come to me? So if we compare to the word, what is this word? It says, your, kind, your good works. Everyone loves people who are good. If there's someone like that, you want to use them in your accounting. Why can't you be promoted? Because, you know, why is it that you're just, you know, you may be giving the best position of a director, but then, but then soon you're about to be fired. And then you say that you're promoted, but soon you're, you're fired and, and soon you're in the park wandering around by yourself, you know, early retirement. Let's not become someone like that. Why is it that people don't use me genuinely? Because you have a heart of a thief. Because you can't find someone who is truly good. If you are truly good, no matter what trials come, if you do genuinely in front of God, then they will entrust everything to you like Joseph. Why can't we live like this? How can we live like this if we can't even say amen? The parents keep passing these disasters down to their children, these filthy clothes to their children. Who's going to use your children if they're so, if they're so filthy? But you're double-minded and you say, but I'm thinking about my children. Who is that? That's you and I, Lord. We're so filthy we who can't even reply to your word and we have this greed of asking for blessings you know we think that we've done our utmost for our children but it's the parents who are killing the children Lord have pity on us from today may we have a new start we believe the word is active and living in Jesus' name we thank you and bless Amen It happens in Christ. It only happens in Christ. May we all receive blessings today.